Here's the plan for today. We're gonna take my trusty Benjamin Kratos 22 caliber PCP air rifle. We're gonna take the cylinder out of my Heritage Rough Rider 22 caliber revolver. We're gonna use this cylinder, put it in the vise over there. We're gonna take the Kratos and fire it at the rounds that we're gonna put in the cylinder. We're gonna do ballistics gel test. We're gonna get chronograph test. I wanna see how powerful the rounds are coming out of just the cylinder. Should be pretty interesting. Now we have two cylinders to choose from. This one is a 22 long rifle and the other one is a 22 Magnum. I'm gonna to refer to these as my sacrificial cylinders. We'll start off with a 22 long rifle first and then we'll step up to the 22 Magnum. While we're doing these tests, I'm gonna be trying out this DNT Optics Thermite scope. I wanna get your opinion on this optic. This thing goes for $1,000. We're gonna do some daytime shooting right now in the second half of the video. I'm gonna test out the thermal on this. Also, Sigmund sent me out these night vision binoculars. We're gonna be putting these to the test in the second half of the video as well. But I also wanna see how well these do during the day. I think this is gonna perform better in the form of night vision versus daytime. I think there's a lot more to be desired for these, but I want your opinion on these as well. These ones go for around $100, so it's much more budget friendly for a form of night vision. All right, let's get started. We're gonna break out that 22 long rifle cylinder first. We're gonna do a chronograph test. And one last thing before we get started, if you do like this video, I would very much appreciate if you left a like, a comment, and maybe considered subscribing. My channel's been in the dumper, so I would greatly appreciate it. For the 22 long rifle cylinder, we're gonna be using this Aguila Super Extra Hollow Point Ammo. First shot, chronograph test. I wanna get some footage with this DNT optic as well. Show you guys what to expect from a thousand dollar optic. Thirty-eight grains at three hundred and ten feet per second. Eight point one one foot pounds. <laughs> Let's put some targets behind and just see what happens. Let's see what we did. Not much penetration, but we knew it was only going to be eight foot pounds. So at eight foot pounds, I'm actually kind of surprised that it still made it about two inches through it. All right, let's try an ice capade, 22 long rifle. Big water balloon that's frozen. That pretty much did absolutely nothing. One thin baking sheet up, 22 long rifle. Accidentally shot the pan. I think that's gonna do more damage than the bullet. Had to compensate and aim a little bit to the left to hit that, but we hit it. Let's go check and see what happened. So we have a big bulge in the back, but we did not break through with the 22 long rifle. 22 long rifle, soda. Well, I mean, it's only soda, but torn to it pretty decent. 22 long rifle, beef bone. So we put this tiny little hole in there. I don't know if you can see that. We only made it about maybe a quarter inch, so not very effective. The chronograph test for the 22 Magnum is up. Let's see how it compares to the 22 long rifle. Let's see the results. We're gonna do one more chronograph test. That came out to six foot pounds, 233 feet per second. Now I wanna do one more. Because the last time I used my Heritage Rough Rider, well, I wasn't filming, but I had a squib in it. The round made it about four inches down the barrel, and that was it. It's kind of scary. All right, let's see how that one did, and then we're going to move on to the gel test with this. Just as I suspected, that first round definitely did not burn all the powder. More than double the feet per second on that. Let's see what that comes out to for foot pounds. With that updated chronograph reading, we got about four and a half times the amount of foot pounds 28 and a half versus six. So I'm glad I redid that. Let's move on. 22 Magnum cylinder is up for the gel test. Let's see how this compares to the 22 long rifle. I might have just shot the gel by accident. That 
That was much louder. Let's check it out. Compared to that 22 long rifle, we made it about three times the distance, the 22 Magnum in the gel. Let's move on to a soda. 22 Magnum soda. This one kind of terrifies me. All the gunpowder just leaked out. Part of my pellet is in there though. That is definitely interesting. <laughs> okay, redo on the 22 Magnum soda. That was a first. Once again, it's just a soda, but looks relatively similar to the 22 long rifle. I'll have to wait until I see the footage. I'm sure that was more of an explosive reaction than the first one. A little bit more effective, but nothing crazy. One thin baking sheet up. All right, here's an interesting one. I can tell that the bullet left the cylinder sideways. We have a sideways indent on this. It's probably why it didn't go through. Twenty two Magnum Beef Bone. Now I'm really wondering how crappy this federal ammunition is right now, the BYOB, because I keep getting these hits that I don't think are setting off anywhere close to all the gunpowder in it. I can't even tell where it went in. I just don't think it was igniting all the powder. I had that one squib in my Heritage Rough Rider. I think that's exactly pretty much what these are doing. When I'm hearing these shots go off, it sounds pretty similar to the 22 long rifle. It's not much louder. Some of them, like that chronograph reading, the 500 some odd feet per second, that was way louder than the one before it. So we're getting like half the velocity, less than half the velocity out of some of these. I don't know what's up with that. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this portion of the video. I'm gonna wait till it's nighttime and meet you back out here. It's officially nighttime. We're gonna use this DNT Optics thermal sight and that Sigmund night vision binoculars to try and get some footage. I'm gonna to have to turn this light off because it's kind of dimming the night vision on this. So it might be a little dark down here. I don't know if the screen screen's gonna work. It's probably not gonna work. So I'll have to swap between the scope footage and the binocular footage out there and hopefully work something out. But I really do wanna put this stuff to the test because low budget binocular, it's only like a hundred something dollars versus this, which is like upwards of a thousand dollars. So the light is out. I don't know if this is actually gonna be visible here for the green screen, probably not, but whatever. I wanna give this site the best chance possible because I know it gets kind of like thrown off with the light in here. So let's sight in first, see where we're at. I think I should be all set right now and then we can move on to the know your limits. Let me shoot this far right center line. I think I'm just a hair to the right. Just a hair to the right. Okay, stop recording. All right, let's see what that did. Go to the far, let me zoom in one or two. I think I went the wrong way. My only complaint with this is that it does not have the line where you adjust the reticle and then you can see where your past shot was. It just has like the one reticle and it just, well, the way you adjust it, you're either gonna go left or right. You don't really know which way is which. I think that should be all set though. Let's get this zoomed in a little more. All right, we're in business. Know your elements, target. 
I'm editing this footage and just looking back at this right now and trying to figure out what the hell is going on. I forgot to turn my binoculars towards my Know Your Limits targets. And apparently the IR from that is illuminating with my night vision from the scope. So it was extremely dark here. But for some reason, I could see much better through the scope. So I kept shooting and recording, but my recording doesn't look nearly as bright. But I just want to point this out because when I actually focus the binoculars on these targets, it's it's insanely bright. So I just thought I would mention that. I'm officially an idiot. I did not have the target in frame with the binoculars, so I'm going to have to redo the Know Your Limits target. Not like it's a big deal. Let's plow right through this. Now it's flipping me off. Should I compensate or should I aim right on it? Look at that, done pretty quickly. Let's move on to a Texas star. Okay, unfortunately I have a table in my way, but I kind of like challenges. I'm gonna aim like this high to compensate for the distance. I did not zero. Twofer. Oh god. <laughs> this is gonna be the shot of all shots. Oh, shot my table. Shot the table. That thing is dropping. We are making that drop. Oh, just hit the leg. Where was I aiming? Oh. <laughs> Come on. All right, I'm gonna call it quits there. This thing has barely just enough power to take off those two smaller stars. The star on the left, the bigger one, this thing's not gonna come anywhere close to taking that thing off, so. There's no point in even trying that. You have to hit the edges of the plates with this to take it off, because it just doesn't have enough foot pounds. My issue with these scopes, and it's not just this company, it's any of them that have digital zoom and screens built in, I feel like the quality of the screen that's built into all of these scopes, whatever brand, is just not high enough. Now you also have the option of being able to record, which is very nice. So you're getting, I'd say a decent day scope. There's budget scopes, the glass is gonna be much better looking than staring through that during the day. When it comes to night, I think it does a good job. Do I think this is worth a thousand dollars? I would say no. At most, maybe around $600. That's what I'd be willing to pay for it. There's just cheaper scopes that aren't going to record, don't have night vision, much cheaper scopes that are going to be crystal clear in comparison during the day. If you want just like a dedicated night vision scope, I'm not sure what else is out there. Maybe this is a good deal for what it is. In that case, yeah, maybe it is worth that much money. But to me... I don't really do too much night shooting. For those binoculars being $100, I think those are a pretty good deal. You have the ability to record through them, which is kind of nice. The screen could use an upgrade. The daytime view is kind of blurry. I couldn't, I couldn't really get that in focus. The nighttime seems pretty decent. 
for really low budget, I'd say those things are definitely worth it. I have a link from Sigmund, so I'll put that in the pinned comment if you're interested in purchasing that, because I think that's actually a pretty decent deal, just for something budget, I don't know. If you don't have it, it's kind of nice to have something, right? So other than the price on this scope, I think it's actually a pretty decent scope. I'm just, I don't think it, it nets that price for it. I think it should be a, a decent amount cheaper. If they improved the screen on the inside of it, where things just looked way better, through the scope not after the fact when you recorded something that would be nice because i think it looks better recorded than it does viewing through it and that's the issue that i have with so many of these scopes even my atn like i think it's decent but it doesn't also cost a thousand dollars for what i paid for it i feel like when when i bought my atn i think it was right around 500 that was a good deal it does what I want it to do, and it looks better during the day. You can actually deal with looking through it. Some of these are so muddy, and they have artifacts, that when you're looking beyond 100 yards, things just start, like, the light will come in, and I'll have rings around my steels. So I'll have a blue steel, and then I'll have a white circle around it, and you're just like, what is that? Especially with these digital zooms, this one's not too bad. I'm not going to say the brand that I was using that had terrible digital zoom, but be wary when they say digital zoom. Because when it starts enhancing the images, it just, you're losing pixels. And when you're looking through a screen that's already struggling with pixels and it gets that much worse, it, it's not something satisfying to look through. And you could pick up a $60 scope and during the daytime the the thing's going to be immaculate in comparison to some of these that's my only problem with these digital scopes other than that though i feel like if these companies just spent a little bit extra on this upgraded a few more things and just made it nicer it would be one hell of a difference so i'll leave it at that all right so yeah